Hey guys, what's going on? Alright, so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to talk to you about a new set of files that we've been launching and uh, I know what you're thinking. Another set of files, how many files do we need? Yeah, certainly maybe not another set of files, but these are kind of interesting, so hang in with me. Let's go inside where it's going to be a little bit quieter and uh, warmer so we can talk about how these ESR CM files we recently launched are going to be working for your workflow and help improve your efficiency and also the simplicity of your root canals. Alright guys, so let's go inside. guys so let's get this started but uh, before we do that let's just quickly change and uh, get ready for this all righty folks we're set up to go let's try to demonstrate the ESR CM for you guys using a little plastic block so ESR CM was developed originally after ESR and the main difference between the regular ESR and ESR CM is partially a different form of metallurgy and also specifically and more importantly the design. The ESR original file was designed so that it would have kind of similar type of shape, a variable shape and taper as the Wave 1 Gold files. And that was designed for those people who already wanted to use kind of obturators or that kind of a design that had to do with the shape of warm vertical condensation. But what we found out was that a lot of people really didn't like that type of a wide and open shape anymore. And what we, they were looking for was a more conservative preparation that was more like an 04 and max 06 taper preparation, not a variable taper, but a constant taper. And that's where the ESR CM files were designed to do. The second thing about the ESR was that a lot of people were feedback was that they wanted to have a reciprocating file that was cutting a lot more efficiently. And that's also another thing that the ESR CM tries to do is by adding a specific tip that is a far sharper tip than the regular ESR and cutting edges that are much sharper, what you end up having is you have an instrument now that can do reciprocating and has a thinner profile than the regular ESRs is also far more efficient in terms of cutting. So in order to demonstrate that, I'm gonna first quickly talk about the technique and how the files are used together. It's basically five files in total, but I have my own little recipe for it and that's where the Rebuild Endo was kind of uh, helping in terms of uh, developing a protocol for their use and to that extent I'm gonna just show you what is it that I kind of figure would be the best protocol for their use okay first I'm gonna show you these instruments here and we let's try to get them out of the package here I have my endo ring and this is a size 30 we only have five basic files for this so it's a fairly simple system with these five files you are able to do the majority of your instrumentation and of course as we know reciprocation is a type of a motion that is designed and used for a more safer method of instrumentation and uh, to that extent the ESR CMs have been designed to do that. So these are really the five ESR CM files. As you can see here, this is an orifice opener. We're not gonna talk about that. You have your 25 and that's the constant taper 06 file. And then what you have is you have a, a size 3004 a 4004 and a 5004 uh, instrument and these uh, 04 tapers are because as we go in larger sizes there's really no reason to increase the uh, taper of the instrument and here what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a larger apical diameter without cutting too much coronally so an 04 taper will suffice the 2506 is are now expediter. It's the file that is used at the beginning to triage the canal to find out what type of a canal you have. Is it small or is it large? And then from there, you are going to go either down or up based on this protocol to kind of finish the case. So the ESR CM Scouts are, is a variable taper, kind of a 1503 taper file that is very, very flexible. This instrument's heat treated and is super, super flexible. And this flexibility has certain advantages and disadvantages. So if you're doing a super, super difficult case, this instrument is going to be the one that you want to use. So all you need to do is just to get a size six hand file to the apex as a path. And then all of a sudden this guy is going to be able to go down and maneuver that but for most cases to be honest i think that this is a little bit too heat treated and too um, ductile so in these types of cases what you want to do is instead of using the esr cm scout to use the original esr scout which is one of my favorite files for getting down canals because it has a lot more robustness to it 
And this instrument, as you can see here, is a very, it's not quite as heat treated as the ESRCM and comparing the tips here, you can see what we have. We have a different cutting design, a tighter flute. So for a little bit more robust cutting, I may actually replace this guy from here with the use of the original ESR Scout for a little bit more cutting efficiency. And that's uh, uh, my kind of modification of um, the system, if you will. But for more difficult cases, by all means, go ahead and use the DSR CM Scout. Now, these instruments are used on the EndoSync uh, Plus, and as we know, the EndoSync Plus is a handpiece that is able to do both forward rotation, forward reciprocation, and reverse reciprocation. Now, the ESR CM, much like ESR, as well as Wave 1 Gold and the Reciproc system, is a system that the file's cutting edges are designed to cut in counterclockwise direction. So, to that extent, what you want to have is you want to have the EndoSync Plus on the M3 Memory 3 setting, which uh, is uh, 500 RPM, 0.2 Newton centimeter, and the cutting direction is in a counterclockwise direction. And what that does is it allows you to uh, have an instrument that is fairly efficient in cutting, but also is safe with that setting of the OTR. So the first file to use in the canal is the 25. This will gauge the canal and see what we have. So we start from that. Okay, so we're going to use this block here to kind of do this uh, demonstration here for you. At the beginning, obviously, we want to minimize hand filing in this case. So we're just going to a size 10 as opposed to 15 and this is a block that is you can see it's very tight kind of a more advanced kind of a block and we got about 16 millimeters on this we'll take us to the apex all right so the, the way we're going to triage the case and find out what size do we have large or small canal is this 25 at the beginning 2506 to see how it goes you can obviously just put it in and see where it goes and you can see that it's not even going halfway down the canal so as usual we always use some type of a uh, solution here i'm just using water using this um, endo solutions uh, needle which is a 31 gauge needle with a side vented closed ended needle the Brassler has. Essentially what we're doing now is we're going to try to do our rhythm motion with this um, EndoSync Plus and you can see that the speed that we have it running at is 500 rpm with a torque of 0.2 newton centimeter on the counterclockwise direction and that's an OTR motion that we're using. It's a reverse direction OTR and so here we go and we're going to just get it activated. You can see that this thing is rotating outside and it's as soon as it goes inside the tooth is when it starts to get activated and OTR starts to kick in so it doesn't do reciprocation until it gets bound to the tooth two and three and you can see that it's cutting in and going advancing in the canal so at this point what we have decided and found out is that this in fact is a more kind of an advanced canal so you can see the instrument is not going any deeper here let me actually use this little cup here to get all the irrigant. The irrigant I'm using here is just water, so I'm not using anything fancy. You use this with one or two rhythm motions, as you saw. So one, two, and that's three. And you can see the instrument kind of starts to kind of navigate. You could do a little bit of lateral motion so you can enlarge the top of the tooth. So the tip, as you can see here, is nice and can advance very well into the canal. And then we do a little bit of irrigation to remove all of that coronal debris that you saw in there. So we're advancing okay. But now we've found that we have a small canal. So what we can do is we do a little bit of recapitulation here to make sure that we have our opening. Okay, that's great. That opens, make sure that we have a valid path and now at this point we have a chance to either use this guy which is our scout file or you could even use a number 15 hand file and like i said in many cases because the 15 hand file is a little bit more robust than this 15 esrcm scout you may want to use that or you could use as i mentioned the old esr scout which is a little bit more robust than this esr scout and the goal here is to simply just make sure you have enough of a path that is opened up and so here what we're going to do now is we're going to move up to our ESR CM Scout. I'm just going to demo it with this since it's in the system. So we want to get it down to 15, the 16 millimeter, which is the length. And so we can see that that actually very nicely moves straight down to the end of the canal. And you can see that how nicely it actually withstands and stays in that without any type of a transportation and other issues. And that's one of the beauties of 
OTR motion compared to pure reciprocation. It is superior to pure reciprocation because it allows you to have the efficiency of rotation and then the safety of reciprocation when you need it. So after we've done that, now we're gonna go back up to our size 25 to then get the 25 down to the end and you can see that the 25 is advancing. So one more rhythm motion will advance us. You can see that it's grabbed some debris here at the tip and we can do our irrigation here again and you can see that each time the tip of this needle is advancing a little bit more into the canal and now we're going to move back up again and do one two and three and now we can see here that we've reached the apex by our second rhythm motion so here again, we do our irrigation and you look at the needle tip because the needle can also bend around these kind of curves and clean up to the end. So we do our recapitulation that you want to do with these reciprocating files because of the fact that you create a lot of debris. And so what we can do now is we can just do a little bit of lateral enlargement. One, two, three, four, five. And you know, just kind of laterally enlarge the canal do our final irrigation and there we go. You can see we're almost toward to the end, the last two millimeters of the end of the root. And what we can do at this point is to fit a cone here and see what we have. And at this point, a size 2506 from the endo sequence uh, line or BC cone line would be what we are going to want to use. And so by basically placing this down, you can see our 25 will fit down to the apex. And we're done at this point, just placing our BC sealer and placing our 25 to the end is all we're gonna need. But let's say that you wanna have a larger apical diameter and you wanna get it to a size 30. And this is something that you could have, after the fact that the 25 was tight, you could have moved to a 3004 here, as you can see here, because the 3004 compared to the 2506 is a lot. So this is a 2506 here, as you can see, we, after having used it, gotten it to the end, we don't have any distortion or any issues. But the 2506 compared to the 3004, you can see the difference here is that the 3004 is much thinner. So when you started the instrumentation with the 2506, and after your second rhythm motion, you were down to here, what we could have done, we could have moved away from the 25 and actually moved to the 30. 06, and you will see now that the 3006 would have actually reached the end of the route because that's pretty much so it would have been like up to here because we've had a larger taper with the 25 which was 2506 whereas 3004 is much thinner and then all you had to do at that point was to then just drive the 3504 to the end and you can see here that what we're going to do is we're going to do that and the 3004 is already down to the apex so we do that also a couple of rhythm motions and that kind of finishes this canal to a 3004 and now you can see here that the 3004 got a percha cone is going to fit very nicely to the apex as well so we're going to for that we're going to make sure that you take the 3004 got a percha cone not the 3006 because now we have a 3004 taper and you can see that that goes to the apex as well so we had two choices of preparation a 2506 versus a 3004 and that has to do with your preference if you will or your desire to save up more dentin coronal as you can see now the 3004 has a little bit of looseness up on top because of the fact that we've used a 2506 preparation and a 3004 to the apex so it's okay still the biceramic cement will fill this gap without a problem but let's say you wanted to go even a larger size and now move up in sizes to this size 40. And you can see here that that size 40 here will then reach down to the end. Let's put this replace and change the 30 with the 40. And now what we have is we got our 40 and you can see it's kind of stopping at about two, three millimeters from the root end. So we're gonna activate it, it's rotating. Again, we're in counterclockwise direction. It starts to cut, one, two, three nice and then one two three nice and then again we're going to try that one two three awesome and then we're going to irrigate here to show yep our irrigation getting down to the end 
and then the 40, one, two, three. And once again, the 40 here is getting down to the end. And now I'm just gonna show you that a 40 or four cone will reach down to the end as well. And that's the way that's gonna work out here. The 4004 goes down to the end and that's what we have. So that same thing can go with the 5004. I'm not gonna show it because as you can imagine, that's what's gonna happen. So the matching and the sequence cones, the BC cones are fitted with these, the equivalent of the 04 and the 06 files on the ESRCM with this instrument. I'm gonna have a clinical case for you guys in the next video that I make that I showcase and I use this on a molar case so that you can see how this is used clinically. But really the idea of the ESR uh, CM file is the idea of how can we maximize the um, efficiency, uh, cutting efficiency of the reciprocation motion using the OTR as well as now having a little bit smaller taper compared to some most of the other reciprocating files that are out on the market that create these wide and large coronally vertical condensation shapes for thermoplastic cut aperture that are way excessively enlarged coronally in the apical or in the coronal half of the root. And so the main goal of this instrumentation system is to give you that option of using reciprocation safety along with the efficiency of a high quality kind of a Swiss made uh, file that is very sharp and very flexible with the heat treatment and has a specialized tip with smaller taper and diameter so that you can have more minimally invasive preparations of O4 taper shape a lot more safer. And so that's really the ideological concept behind ESRCM and the reason why, in my opinion, is a better system to go by now than the original ESR file that uh, we launched because the ESR files were not quite as sharp in terms of for their efficiency and they were also creating a much larger preparation shape. This will be a much simpler way of now introducing a reciprocation motion into the endo sequence line of files combine it with this reciprocation. These files would obviously work on your reciprocating hand pieces, whichever one that you have, but with the endo sync plus you have the advantage of being able to apply OTR instead of pure reciprocation, which in my opinion is a superior motion than pure reciprocation because pure reciprocation is not cognizant of the amount of torque that you're applying so you end up essentially just doing back and forth back and forth creating a lot of debris in the canal whereas with the OTR your file would be rotating and only turning into reciprocation based on the amount of uh, torque that it's experiencing so you, you have both efficiency and safety as a little bit of a kind of a medium ground in between the two so that's pretty much it I hope this was helpful to you this was a little introduction here about the ESR CM which is a new file that's been launched uh, by uh, Brasser USA and we've helped uh, put together the protocol for its clinical use and if you have any questions about this uh, file please uh, put them down here in the comments below I'd be uh, more than happy to answer them I've already used this for several months now and I've done a bunch of cases with it. It's a much better file than the original ESR. The ESR CM has far better cutting efficiency and uh, flexibility. The only difference is that when it comes to the smaller sizes, uh, if I have to choose between the ESR CM Scout versus the original ESR Scout, I will probably choose the ESR Scout. So you can actually do a little combination of a mix and match and use the sizes 25, 30, and 40 ESR CM, and then use the original ESR Scout as your smaller size options here. That's my little tip for you and use. Use them, let me know what you think, and I'll be more than happy to show you. And of course, in the next video, I will also show you a clinical case that I've done among many, and uh, hopefully you will learn how it's applied clinically and how the cases look afterwards. All right, guys, hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to see you in the next video. And until then, let's save some tea.